Thank you for joining me. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on social media. I'm going to be doing a podcast on the sciences called Diagnostic Test Can ID Any Infection. This was an article that caught my eye. As usual, I'll put the link to it in the description. But basically, on some of these science podcasts, I just read the article, give my little thoughts here and there. It's titled, New Universal Diagnostic Test Can ID Any Infection. It uses DNA sequencing to track down any unwanted invaders by Christian Hauser. Uh, the site is Freethink, Move the World. I didn't say that first. So right away, I'm interested. I get a um, you know, little bit of a hope surge. And when you see articles like this, and you got to be careful, I explained in some of them with clickbaity type thing. But let's give the article a read and see if my interest was uh, warranted. Before a doctor can treat a patient, they need to know what is wrong with them. Pretty obvious, right? That's not so hard if the problem is chicken pox or a sprained ankle. But infections can be far more difficult to diagnose. Viral pneumonia and bacterial pneumonia, for example, cause similar symptoms but can require different treatments. Doctors may order tests to ensure they're treating a patient for the right problem, but then a diagnostic test is designed to hunt for just one specific virus, bacteria, or other pathogen in one specific type of sample, such as blood or urine. Each diagnostic test takes time to analyze, and if the first round of tests isn't conclusive, a doctor might have to order another subjecting patients to the sometimes invasive process of sample collection and delaying their treatment. Now scientists at UC San Francisco say they have developed a single diagnostic test that can search any type of sample for the DNA of known pathogens, and it can deliver results in as few as six hours. Right there, I'm, I'm interested, and by the way, there are links here so as i'm reading it there are links to certain things you can see the link for developed and you can go into that possibly an abstract i didn't check that right just now and this looks like a great uh, potential breakthrough let's keep reading one and done diagnostic test we already have tests that id infections by searching for a virus or bacteria's genetic code in a sample the most commonly used covid19 test called RT-PCR test, works by hunting down the coronavirus's RNA. What the UC San Francisco researchers have developed is a diagnostic test that starts by sequencing all of the DNA present in the sample, human, viral, bacterial, and fungal, using an existing technique called metagenomic next-generation sequencing, MNGS. Okay. Then a software program searches all of the DNA, looking for matches from a database of every known pathogen. Find a match and you know that the pathogen has infected a patient. As researcher Charles Chiu told Freethink, the doctor would choose whatever type of sample is most likely to house the pathogen, e.g. lung fluid for a patient with signs of pneumonia, but they would have to worry about using a diagnostic test designed to work with that specific type of sample. The advance here is that we can detect an infection from any body fluid without special handling or processing for each distinct body fluid, she you said in a press release. It is a simple procedure. And there's a link for that also. All right, I'll continue. Sequencing a solution. The researchers previously demonstrated that their technique could be used to detect RNA viruses from several body fluids or bodily fluids. So for their latest study published in Nature Medicine, they chose to focus on a test that could identify the DNA of bacteria and fungi. To start, the researchers used a diagnostic test to analyze 180 body fluid samples from 160 patients. I was wondering if, this, okay, yeah. It is 180 body fluid samples from 160 patients. These samples had already undergone regular diagnostic testing with two traditional methods, culture testing 
trying to grow microbes in a petri dish, petri dish, and PSR, PCR testing. The researchers used two different techniques or technologies to generate their sequences. Nanopore sequencing, which can deliver results in just six hours, and alumnia sequencing, which can handle many samples but takes more than 24 hours. Both methods match the traditional methods, diagnosis, and about 75% bacterial infections and 91% of fungal infections. The researchers also analyzed samples from 12 patients who were confirmed to have some kind of infection but had tested negative in both culture and PCR testing. The method was able to identify the pathogens in seven of the 12. Initially, we envisioned that this test would be used after a patient tests negative by other methods, done routinely in the hospital laboratory, to you told FreeThink. Once there is more acceptance and usage of the test by the clinical community, we believe that it will be ordered and used earlier in the course of a patient's workup, he continued, in order to maximize the potential clinical impact that the test would have by providing more timely diagnosis for unknown infections. The researchers are now working towards getting FDA approval for their diagnostic test. If granted, the test could one day provide doctors with quicker answers as to what ails their patients, minimizing treatment delays. So another article I find fascinating. I could see this as a more practical um, type of article where you know I'm not talking about you know, black holes and uh, pulsars. <laughs> this is a really um, could be a, a a really interesting breakthrough. Go to the doctor, and I could see this being um, expanded upon, as you said, if it's given a uh, you know, proper funding, gets approval. You go in, and obviously they have routine. So you go to see a doctor, and they're gonna take a blood sample and see if uh, you know whatever's causing what uh issues you have and if it comes up negative you don't have to go through a process of finding out going back trying something you could just go to this test and you have a better example or they narrow down and can identify things in a much easier way you could see this benefiting a huge population i mean i like to think of these things as coming down the line and being an everyday thing that gets incorporated. But I guess you can't have that conversation without having a conversation about healthcare in the United States. But let's say on a worldwide scale, it becomes a common thing. Your misdiagnosis percentage goes down. Uh, people's lives can be improved by not being on this, you know, uh, merry-go-round of going to doctors and checking for things, you know, going through several tests and things coming up negative. And by that time, you, what is really causing issue could be getting worse. But you could see this impacting in, in a wide scale from hospitals down to doctors, you know, pers personal practice, uh, I think it might be called. So it's going to be interesting to see because I like to try to sometimes follow some of these things and see how actually what happens. So when did this come out? I think this is pretty new. 15th of November, 2020. Okay. My bookmark uh, notepad thing is getting quite filled with all these links and stuff. But like I said, this is why I do these science podcasts. An article catches my attention. I get time to just open my mic and, you know, this has been buzzing around my head. What I think the potential is, how far in the future is it? Is it something practical that we could rely on? I think this is one of those cases. This looks like, I mean, if you I do the three click rule, make sure it's pretty valid. Um, I don't always do it, but here I could hit a link. taking a couple of seconds to load but within the article you have links and you could kind of get more informed by following these links you could kind of tell if they're legit at some point and you start seeing the work they do and how they did it it gets a little 
um, technical here and there, but that's why these opinion pieces from these writers, they talk about these articles. So you got articles, they'll have many links in it. You hit the link and this will go to the UC of San Francisco where the uh, doctor or the professor researcher worked at. And you can kind of get an idea, you know, that's why a lot of these decent uh, websites at least provide these things. Uh, I do too much rabbit hole chasing in politics and uh, other areas of social media. But most of the time I'm confident. I read an article, I check three links or so, make sure it looks uh, legit. And you know, you could just uh, put it out there and see how people react to it. Hope people get interested in science and uh, medicine, the breakthroughs that are happening. How advanced are we? Is it closer than we think or is it much further? I think this is a close thing that is a general good thing that I see being implemented on a practical, cheap level. But I can't speak for all around the world, right? This is a United States of America. We don't have free health care. It's somewhat of a nightmare. It should have been a bigger issue politically. But this is the sciences. And I hope people get interested in these things. This is going to be something I will try to keep track of. And any universal test that can ID an infection should really impact the medical field in a big way. Be well, everybody. I'll see you all next time.